Rapunzel. Once there lived a husband and a wife who loved each other very much. They were happy together, but they longed to share their happiness with a child. Years passed, and it seemed as if they would have only each other as family. Then one day, they learned that the wife was going to have a baby. The husband promised himself that he would do everything he could to please his wife. As she waited for her baby to arrive, the wife often looked at, beautiful, at the beautiful garden next to their home. Bright flowers and fragrant herbs filled the garden. But people stayed out of it, for the lovely garden belonged to a powerful witch. Every day the wife saw a crisp Rapunzel growing in the garden. She could almost taste the fine salad it would make. But she and her husband were poor. They would never be able to buy Rapunzel from the marketplace. So every day the garden re reminded the wife of what she could not have. Why are you so sad? asked her husband. Oh, the Rapunzels grow so thick and fresh in the witch's garden, she said. I cannot think of anything else. The husband could not bear to see his wife unhappy. That night, he slipped into the witch's garden and took some Rapunzel. It was dangerous and wrong, he knew. Yet, he thought of his wife's sadness. It seemed worth the risk. Indeed, when he went home, his wife hugged him and thanked him. She ate her Rapunzel salad, and both husband and wife were content. But soon, the wife longed for more Rapunzel. A second time, the husband crept into the witch's garden. This time, the witch caught him. Please, begged the husband, do not punish me. I take the Rapunzel only so that my wife will be happy. She carries our child, and she craves Rapunzel salad. The witch thought for a moment, then said, you may take as much Rapunzel as you want, but when your child is born, you must give her to me. Perhaps you will forget, the husband thought. Perhaps when our child is born, we can offer her something else. But the witch did not forget, and when the baby was born, the husband and wife had nothing else to offer. The witch took the, their baby. She named the baby Rapunzel and raised the child as her daughter. Rapunzel grew more lovely with each passing year. She is my most beautiful possession, the witch thought. Soon, I will have to lock up my treasure. For the time will come when a young man will want to marry Rapunzel and steal her away. The witch did not say this to Rapunzel. She simply let, led Rapunzel to a tall tower that had, no door, that had no door or stairs. This will be your home now, said the witch. And so the witch kept Rapunzel hidden away for years. No one else ever saw Rapunzel's beauty. The witch was so careful that she would not even create steps for her to climb up to the tower. Instead, when she visited, the witch called, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let your hair, let down your hair. Rapunzel slipped her long golden braids around a peg by the window so the witch could climb up. But the witch's visits were not enough. Rapunzel felt very lonely. When the witch was away, only the birds came to visit and listen to her sing. One day, as Rapunzel was singing, 
A prince from a nearby kingdom heard her. He rode to the tower and looked up at the beautiful woman in the window. While the prince watched and listened, love grew in his heart. The prince returned day after day to hear Rapunzel sing. He tried to think of a way to reach her and tell her of his love. As he puzzled over this, he heard the witch call Rapunzel. The prince hid and saw the witch climb up Rapunzel's braids. The next night, the prince stood beneath the tower. He called softly, trying to imitate the witch. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. When Rapunzel's braids dropped down, the prince climbed into the tower. Rapunzel was frightened. She had never seen another person except for the witch. The prince spoke gently to her. He told Rapunzel that he had fallen deeply in love with her. He spoke of his kingdom and of the family they could, they could have there. Rapunzel listened with her heart. She gave the prince her hand in marriage. The prince visited every evening, always bringing a rose for his wife. Together they planned Rapunzel's escape from the tower. Rapunzel did not tell the witch about the prince, for she knew that the witch would never let her go. Rapunzel hid the roses too, scattering the petals among her dresses. During her lonely days, their scent reminded Rapunzel of the prince's love. But one day, as the witch climbed into the tower, a rose petal fell from Rapunzel's dress. The witch saw it and learned of the prince's visits. How quick he is to steal what is mine, she hissed. I have to keep you safe from others. I have kept you safe from others all these years, and now you wish to leave? Very well. Go. The witch cut off Rapunzel's braids and sent her away to live in the forest. That night, when the prince called, the witch smiled an evil smile. She threw down Rapunzel's braids. By the time the prince saw the witch, he could not escape. Rapunzel is gone, and so shall you be gone, the witch laughed as the prince fell from the high tower. The prince landed among sharp thorns that scratched his eyes and blinded him. Without his sight and his beloved Rapunzel, he wandered wherever his uncertain steps took him. Every day he wept for all that he had lost. Seasons passed. One spring day, the prince heard a song whispering through the trees. The memory of Rapunzel's voice stirred within him. Listening carefully, the prince moved forward, moved toward the song. His uncertain steps grew steady and strong. For when he found the singer, he found Rapunzel and two children. Alone in her forest home, Rapunzel had given birth to the prince's twins. Rapunzel wept with joy and held the prince close. As her tears fell upon his face, they healed his eyes. In that moment, the witch's powers over Rapunzel and the prince ended. Together, the family left the sadness and loneliness of the forest, and together they made their home in the prince's kingdom. Rapunzel and the prince filled their days with the sound of their children's laughter and the sweet song of love.